Welcome back, Paolo your host, Conversation Artificial Intelligence. And here is the question. As a product manager, what do you need to know about artificial intelligence? In a few minutes, you're gonna learn things that can help you immediately in your work. I think the first thing you need to know is really understanding what it is, the process and the system of what we call artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is a decision-making process that has an input, and these inputs are data. This data have some quality, okay? So you need to understand immediately the quality of this data. What are these quality or properties of this data? The type of data, are they, for example, uh, the name of people or their uh, the temperature. This is a different type of data. You see name are explaining something about the labeling uh, something and numbers they're quantifying. Uh, how variables are these data in, in your sample set? So for example, uh, looking at the age of people, are you looking at a sample of people that are going from uh, zero years old to 110 years old or are you looking to a specific demographic? Because that changes what's going on later on. The quantity, how many people are there in this sample set? Are you looking at 30,000 people or are you looking at 200 million people data? And that changes a lot of things. And then the velocity, how often they come and how often do you have to process them? Is it some kind of uh, internet portal where people are coming continuously or it's some kind of process where you update uh, things once a day or once every week? totally different world. So this thing, this concept, input, and the quality of the input is what you need to do. So this data, they go to a process of data makeup. They get a little bit transformed, translated, if you like, from a human language to a machine language. So that's the other piece that we have into this process. And then there is what we call the extraction of features. It's not always like this. I'm just simplifying, but just simplifying. We're basically doing a translation from the human language to the machine language. And then there is the real AI, which is some form of automated decision making. An intelligence, if you like, even a narrow intelligence that is making a decision based on this data is coming up with some form of decisions. So at this stage, what do you need to understand about these decisions? In my personal view is that every AI in the process of making the decisions will have a requirement for being training. So you have to teach the AI to do this task. And so there's gonna be lots of complexity around this training. You need to understand that training is variable of how good is the AI, basically, and how complex is putting together the process of building this artificial intelligence uh, process, if you like. Then you need to understand some system level properties. So what is the processing time? Is it a super complicated algorithms that takes 10 years to work? Or is it a light algorithms that can be working in a few milliseconds? What type of hardware requirements I have? Do I need a very sophisticated computer to run this algorithm? Or I need some kind of uh, modest computer? Can I do it on a mobile phone? Or I had to do it in a large infrastructure on the cloud? These are really the things that as product managers, you need to understand because they have an impact on the bottom line, on the cost and the time to take these things from conception to your product or to modify these things. And then what are the characteristics of the production deployment? There is an entire sector of AI that uh, deals with this. Can I really move the algorithm from a science development environment to a production environment? And what it means, how can I do it? How can I update them? And then the output of this process is, of course, some kind of decision. And that decision can be correct or wrong, but there are a few things that you really have to keep in mind. The first thing is this output is the expression of some kind of performance. The easiest thing that you can think of is precision. Okay, so how precise is the decision? So this algorithm is deciding whether or not the picture represents banana or orange, how precise, how many times gets banana right or orange right. 
That's kind of simple, but there are more complex situations where the uh, measure of performance is really specific. So for example, think of things like a search engine, Google. When you look at Google, Google is not returning you really an answer that is right or wrong. It's returning you an answer that is, hey, this is my first 100 suggestions for you. So how are you going to measure that this thing is doing well or is doing bad? So you need to think how the measurement of the performance of the algorithm is to be made. So that's really where the product manager has to have an understanding of what's going on. And then you need to have an understanding of what it is that the degradation of these portions over time, because the data is going to change and going to evolve over time. And fundamentally, the algorithm over time will change its performance unless you design the entire thing as an evolutionary process. But if in order to design it as an evolutionary process, then you need to have other considerations. Now, there is a lot more years so I could talk for about two years and not finish it. But this very infrastructure, it gives you a lot. It really gives you a lot. Keep this in mind. So now I want to give you a few more insights. So you can think of the machine learning or the artificial intelligence by way of how you categorize the input, okay? So depending on the input can come in, you can define the various elements of artificial intelligence as three types of problem. The supervised learning problems, which are problems where you basically are teaching the computer to do something by giving them what we call label data. So where you basically already give the solution of the problem to the computer and then it says, okay, you have to operate on one million cases for an hundred thousands of them. I give you the solution. You learn from this an hundred thousands and then for the remaining nine hundred thousand, you're going to make a decision a law. Then there is what's called unsupervised learning problem is if you basically have data that are not labeled, but you still want to find some kind of pattern, some kind of divisions in the data. And finally, you have what's called an enforcement learning problem. Basically, if your data are the output of sequence of actions. So for example, think of the robots in a typical Amazon fulfilling center. So these are the centers where they take the items, they create the pack and, and they ship it to you. So the robot is going all over the place. So it's going step one, step two, step three. And so the output of that sequence is the input for the algorithm, basically. So that's what's called the reinforcement learning. So just let's visualize again, when you look at it from a viewpoint of input data, you have supervised learning, you can have an unsupervised learning, or you can have a reinforcement learning. Another way of seeing machine learning is to look at it by outputs, okay? By categorizing the outputs. So we have a regression if the output of the model is a number. We have a classification if the output of the model is a label, so red or black, banana or orange. We have a clustering if the output of the model is a group, a data set. And then we have an anomaly detection when the output of the model is uh, some kind of uh, data, typically numerical data, that depart from an average, from a group of other data. So with this information, you basically have a framework of what you need to do to understand the full end-to-end -end machine learning slash artificial intelligence process, how you deliver, and then how you think of the specific algorithms and how you classify them. There is, of course, years and years that you can spend in understanding these things, both on the very technical level or the system engineering level on the product and solution level and also the strategy level. So there's so much that can be said that uh, we could stay here for hours, but I made the promise to you that this would be quick and you get some value, something that you can use and you can harness in your everyday work. Thank you very much. See you at the next episode of Conversations in Artificial Intelligence with Paolo, your host. See you again.